Now back to Monica Robbins, who you just saw in action a few moments ago. As you probably also know, our senior health correspondent recently returned to work only three months after surgery for a brain tumor. And tonight, she is sharing her road to recovery, a journey that includes finding a new normal and finding a way back to the stage where our Monica rocks again. Tuesday, I was explaining what meningioma was. I'm the health reporter, so of course I'm going to do a story on my own brain tumor. Thursday at 5.30 a.m., I was getting prepped for surgery. I had given it up to the universe. I figured if it was time, I, I was gonna be fine. But I was afraid for everybody else. I wanted to stay funny. It's Salisbury steak for lunch. Mashed potatoes, there you go. Love you. I just wanted to be cracking jokes all the way up until the time they wheeled me away. Left a good job. Hey. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. Good luck, Thank you. You know, I was having fun with the staff in the operating room. One hippopotamus. Two hippopotamus. <laughs> they were giggling right before I'm about to have brain surgery, and it was clear, you know, I've, I've been here, done that before, not on me, but with other people. So for me, it was rather odd how calm I was because it was a familiar surrounding for me. The surprise was the significant amount that was in my skull and they had to drill and drill to get that out. They explained to me the size of my tumor. It was more like uh, the thickness of the white part of a coconut and it was the size of a pancake. And that meant I, I lost, you know, significant amount of bone. So they had to put in three titanium mesh plates, which I would refer to as kind of like the scaffolding. They put in scaffolding to replace the bone I lost. That's where I'm healing. That's what I'm taking care of. My course of action for every six months is to go in and get an MRI to make sure the part that's still on my carotid and on my optic nerve doesn't continue growing. So I'm just cleaning it really. Okay. I thought, you know, maybe my vision was gonna be a little impacted, but I didn't know it was gonna be as significant as it was. I'm wearing sunglasses because I don't want you to see my crazy looking eyes right now. Imagine breaking a mirror and when you look in the mirror, you see like six or seven images of the same thing. They're clear, but that's what it was like trying to look at one thing. Basically, a quarter of my skull had significant nerve damage, and I'm still dealing with that. There's still nerve damage on the top of the roof of my mouth. I can still feel it. It's numb. I was terrified. Am I ever going to be able to sing again? And if so, when getting just one more piece of my life back. All I've wanted is normal. They kept saying, you're gonna have a new normal, and I'm fighting that. And I gotta stop. How's everybody doing tonight? Wow. <laughs> so, believe it or not, I have slowed down a little bit. <laughs> and I haven't I, noticed. I, uh, I, I just want to thank everybody who, who have reached out, everybody who came to that show. There's another one this coming Friday, and uh, not, not tomorrow, but next week. Right. And uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I'm just so blown away. And tonight at 11, we're going to uh, talk about how I coped, a lot of attitude and humor. And my work family was just unbelievable. And yes, I did drag Betsy Kling up on stage last week. And, and you all know I don't and, sing. And made her so. sing. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I, I can't explain it. I think it's um, just something that. Uh, you know, it's always about looking forward and, and also thinking about all those people who every day I woke up and when I was feeling sorry for myself, I thought about all those people who had it worse than I did. And it was, shut up, Monica, get out of bed mm. and get moving. And um, that's what I did. And um, so I, uh, 
I'm incredibly grateful to my surgeon, mm -hmm. and I'm incredibly grateful to my family, and now I truly know what it means to be incredibly grateful. And I'm hoping yeah. that, there's a lot of stories I'm gonna tell you guys as the, as the weeks and months go by, but I've learned a lot, and I'm hoping that I can help somebody else's uh, load get a little lighter yeah. with, with all the things I've learned. And, you and have already motivated yeah. all of us, yeah. that is for sure. Seeing you smile as you were being wheeled into the operating room, <laughs> <laughs> and that picture of you where you look like and singing you know, Tina Turner, singing yeah. Tina Turner, <laughs> right? And that picture of you, the selfie that you're taking. Oh yeah, surgery. I oh, couldn't, I couldn't see. The funniest thing was I like knew where all the buttons were on my phone, so yeah. I'm like, ah, I just wasn't in the middle. That's all. <laughs> but yeah, you know. Yeah. And just to clarify, how Monica inspires everyone. This was the conversation. You should come sing with me. Oh, I don't sing. I had a brain tumor. All right, I'm going to sing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how that goes yeah, now. So yes, girlfriend, we are so thrilled with that, right? that you are here yeah. it, and you sure keep are. moving on. It's really something. And again, having you here tonight on a night where we have this big news, your perspective, your context, mm -hmm. it's just invaluable. I mean, the best medical correspondent I've ever worked with. And, and, so I, and I thought I was yeah, slowing down, too, no, by the no. way. <laughs> I, I come so. back to this. This, yeah. Really? We need yeah. to. You yeah. can see why. And we'll see you at 11 as well. You got it. All, All right. right. Earlier tonight, our senior medical correspondent, Monica Robbins, walked us through a tough emotional time in her life. Last fall, she underwent brain surgery. And tonight, she continues her story. And this time, she's explaining to us how she coped with the right attitude, humor, and help from all of you to get her through a truly life or death situation. I'm terrified, which is ridiculous. I've been doing this longer than I've been doing television, but I'm afraid. Is it gonna hold? Is it gonna last? Do I have it? I can hit those notes, but they hurt. But I'm still gonna hit them. There's no crying in baseball. There's no crying in news. I didn't cry about this. I mean, I had my moments, but they were private. I didn't cry in front of anybody. It was very difficult for me when people cried to me about it. The way I dealt with it was I got mad. And I often said, I'm training for an MMA fight. I knew it was gonna kick my butt, and believe me, it did. When I came to after surgery, Deke was in my room and he was looking at me. And the first thing I said when I looked up at him was, you think I'm sexy, don't you? I found a way to laugh at every single thing I possibly could. I get staples yeah. out today. Yes. Even the most uncomfortable, weird things, I figured out a way to laugh about everything. <laughs> the physical part, wasn't a big deal. The psychological part, all of those things that I had been doing wrong, I'm still working on. So this is the banner from work. I haven't looked at it yet. I was unbelievably touched. I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> In this community, just the love, unreal. I've never been the beneficiary of that. And I really think that I may be sitting here today because of that. I wish you much courage, strength, and peace. I believe this will change you in a way you probably can't even see right now. That is going to take me back and remind me of how far I've come and what I meant to people and what people mean to me. You have people you don't even know cheering for you. Hang in there, do what they tell you to do, and keep taking one step after another. I've had a, a very sobering wake-up call, and that wake-up call basically told me that I need to spend more time with friends and family, because honestly, in the big scheme of things, I still have a brain tumor and I don't know how much time I have left. I think since I spent so many years working ridiculous hours and doing so much, I think it's time that I give a little back to myself. And that's what I'm gonna spend time, at least, you know, this year doing.
You're pretty amazing, Monica Robbins. Uh, you know, I think the, the reality is there, but you guys know me well enough that uh, I don't have time for that. So uh, <laughs> I, I've done enough things in my life that I, I, I have too much left to do, and that's the way I want to live my life. I want to keep moving and keep doing things and, and, and learning. That's my focus. Yeah. You have inspired our community, as you heard from so many people in those letters and things like that. But I think part of it is because you are so honest about what you have gone through and about knowing what is ahead. And yet still you come in here with that smile <laughs> and that attitude every day. You know what? And that's that's the point. If I can teach anybody or lessen somebody else's load um, from the things that I've learned. And believe me, I have so much I still need to learn and I'm I'm learning every day and believe me I am not perfect and you guys are I'm gonna depend on you guys to kinda keep tabs on me because there's old Monica and there's new Monica and old Monica <laughs> keeps wanting to come out yeah. and uh, new Monica keeps having to slap her back in there but slow um, her down a little yeah more. and and that's something we we all need to learn from but sure. uh, you know it's uh, the one thing I told you this back in October um, I, I've learned to be present and that's something I'm going to keep doing. And being mm -hmm. present is a very, very good place to be. That's fantastic. The tagline to that Gretchen Wilson song you were singing, I ain't leaving till they throw me out. <laughs> yep, that's exactly right. Yep. And we are so glad yeah. about it. All right. Thanks, Thanks guys. Monica. Thanks, Monica.